Chapter 12 The Chapter of Joseph from the Al Quran of Muhammad, translated out of Arabic into French and newly Englished by Alexander Ross, London, 1649. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Abu Jalal. Chapter 12. The Chapter of Joseph. Containing an hundred and thirteen verses. Written at Mecca. In the name of God, gracious and merciful. I am the merciful God. These signs are the signs of the book which distinguisheth good from evil. We have cause to descend from heaven the al Quran, written in the Arabic tongue. Peradventure ye will learn it. I deliver unto thee in the al Quran one of the best things that I have inspired into thee. Thou wert before the coming thereof in the number of the ignorant. Remember thou that Joseph said to his father, My father, I saw in a dream eleven stars, the sun and the moon. I saw them adoring me. My son, said his father, discover not thy dream to thy brothers. They will conspire against thee. The devil is an open enemy to men. Thou shalt be elected of the Lord in this world. He shall teach thee the explication of dreams. He shall accomplish his grace upon thee and upon the lineage of Jacob. And he did accomplish it upon thy fathers, Abraham and Isaac. The Lord knoweth all things and is most wise. The history of Joseph shall serve for example to posterity. Remember thou how his brothers said, Our father loveth our brother Joseph more than all us together. He is in exceeding great error. Let us kill Joseph and cast him into some secret place remote from us, his absence will render the face of our father most gentle towards us. After his death, we will be converted. One of them said, You shall not do well to kill him, but cast him into the well. Some passengers will take him and carry him into an unknown country. They say to their father, Father, wherefore dost thou not send joseph into the fields with us we will be very careful he shall sport and recreate himself i fear said he that ye will neglect to preserve him dost thou fear said they that a wolf should devour him in our presence and that we want strength to defend him in the morning they led him with them and cast him into a well we inspired him to prophesy to them what should befall them for their mischief they acted but they wanted knowledge to comprehend it they in the evening returned to their father's house with eyes full of dissembled tears and said unto him father we sported and ran who should run the best joseph remained with our baggage a wolf came that devoured him thou wilt not believe us although we speak the truth then they showed him his shirt which they had sprinkled with blood it is you that hath done it said he you shall answer it before god he is my protector and was patient without lamenting there passed that day note the levantines well a caravan a number of persons travelling together End note. a caravan near to that well who desiring to draw water to drink let down a bucket on which joseph took hold to get out they gave him clothes 
led him away secretly and sold him at a good rate for ready money they would not kill him in which they were honest men he that bought him in egypt commanded his wife to have care of him that he might one day be useful for their service and be to them instead of a son thus did we establish joseph in the country of egypt and taught him the exposition of dreams thy lord is omnipotent but few men know him when joseph came to the age of manhood we gave him knowledge and prudence thus do we regard the righteous his master's wife became amorous of his beauty she one day shut him into her chamber and solicited him with love god defend me said he to betray my master and be unchaste he was in the number of the righteous and fled to the door his mistress ran after him and to stay him tore his shirt through the back she met her husband behind the door to whom she said what other thing doth he merit who would dishonour thine house than to be imprisoned and severely chastised lord said joseph she solicited me that infant which is in the cradle and of thy parentage shall be witness then the infant in the cradle said if joseph's shirt be torn before she hath spoken truth and joseph is a liar if the shirt be rent behind joseph hath delivered the truth and she a lie then her husband beheld joseph's shirt torn behind and knew that it was extreme malice and said to joseph take heed to thyself and beware this act be not divulged do thou speaking to his wife implore pardon for thy fault thou art truly guilty the women of the city said among themselves that the rich man's wife was amorous of his slave and that she had solicited his love and had erred from the right way which she understanding made them an exceeding fair feast and caused joseph to enter the parlour where they sate while they carved their meat they were so surprised and entangled with joseph's beauty that they instead of carving their meat cut their fingers o oh god said they this is not a man but an angel then said she unto them behold him whom i loved with so much passion she another time importuned him to satisfy her desire and perceiving that he would not condescend to her will menaced him with the prison and to make him miserable o oh god said joseph i had rather be a prisoner than do what she desireth deliver me from her malice defend me from inclining to her lubricity and from being in the number of the wicked his lord heard his prayer he understandeth and knoweth all things this woman feeling joseph's resolution judged it requisite to imprison him for some time he was put prisoner with two men one of which told him that he had dreamed that he pressed grapes to make wine the other said that he dreamed that he carried bread upon his head which the birds did eat they demanded of him the interpretation of their dreams because he seemed to them to be a good man he said to them before ye break fast i will interpret your dreams i will first tell you what god hath taught me and how i quit and abandon the law of the infidels and embrace the law of our fathers abraham isaac and jacob we ought not to worship many gods such as believe in the unity of god are endued with his grace 
but few men give him thanks. O prisoners, who hath more power, idols, or one sole god who is omnipotent? The gods which ye adore are but idols, whom ye and your fathers call by such a name as seemeth good to you. Ye have no reason to worship them. God doth not enjoin you this. He commandeth you to worship him alone. This is the right way. But the greatest part of the world of this are ignorant. O prisoners, the one of you shall give wine to drink to his master. The other shall be hanged. The birds shall feed on his head. The interpretation ye have required shall be accomplished. He besought him that should be saved to remember him when he should be near to his master. But the devil caused him to lose the remembrance of Joseph, who remained prisoner the space of nine years. At that time, the king of Egypt saw in a dream seven fat kine, which seven lean kine devoured, and seven green ears of corn with seven dry ears, of which he required the interpretation of his doctors. They answered that the dream was very obscure, and that they knew not the interpretation. The prisoner that had been set at liberty said that he would forwith give the interpretation of the dream, remembered Joseph, and calling him unto him, said, O righteous man, explain unto us what is the signification of seven fat kine devoured by seven lean and seven green ears of corn and as many dry peradventure i shall return to the king and his people and they shall understand the interpretation of this dream ye shall sow the earth seven years following which shall abound in fruits Preserve your harvest in the ears, and take only what shall be necessary for life. After this, there shall come seven years barren and unfruitful, in which the people shall suffer much. The king of Egypt, having learned the interpretation of this dream, commanded to call Joseph. The messenger said unto him, O Joseph, return to thy master, and require of him the meaning of the women who did cut their fingers he hath knowledge of their malice hath caused them to assemble and demanded of them what was their design when they solicited thee with love they answered they knew no sin in thee and his wife confessed the truth saying she had importuned thee but that thou art a very just man. Joseph answered, By this it appears that I am no traitor to my master in his absence. God guideth not traitors. I will not say I am a man without sin. The spirit of man inclineth to evil, except such to whom God hath given his particular grace. He is gracious and merciful to whom seemeth good to him. The king, having talked with Joseph, entered him into the number of his domestics, and made him superintendent of his revenues. Note, all the revenues of the crown, end note, because he knew him to be a man of spirit, faithful and thrifty. We, by our especial grace, established Joseph in the country of Egypt, where he did what seemed good to him. I deprive not the righteous of their reward on earth. The recompense of the other world is greater for them that believe in my law and have my fear before their eyes. The brethren of Joseph returned to buy corn. He said to them, When ye shall come again, bring with you your young brother by the father you shall find i will make you good measure and lodge well my guests if you bring him not 
there shall be no corn for you approach not this kingdom without him they answered lord his father loveth him exceedingly nevertheless we shall endeavor to perform what thou enjoinest us he commanded his servants to put their money for corn in the bottoms of his brethren's sacks perhaps said he they will return or acknowledge this favor when they shall come into their country when they arrived at their father they said father there is no more corn for us if our young brother go not with us if he go thither we shall have good measure and we will be careful of him you will be careful said he as you were heretofore of your brother joseph god will defend him better than you he is the merciful of the merciful when they poured forth their corn they found their money at the bottoms of their sacks and said our father what shall we desire more our money is restored to us and we have bread for our family permit that our brother go with us we shall have better measure this is a small thing to the king of egypt i will not send him with you unless ye all swear before god to bring him back again if there be no great impediment they swore to fulfill his will then said he i take god to be witness of your oath o my sons enter not altogether into the city but go in at several gates to the end the people may not be jealous of you god commandeth what to him seemeth good i rely on him all true believers ought to resign themselves to his divine will they enter the city as their father enjoined them to content him being arrived before joseph he took his little brother by the hand and said to him trouble not thyself for what shall become of thy brethren having filled their sacks he caused a cup adorned with precious stones to be put into the sack of his little brother caused it to be given out that they of the caravan had stolen the king's cup and sent men after them to search those strangers protested they saw it not and that they came not into egypt to steal that they were sureties for each other and that he who had stolen it deserved punishment the cup was found in the sack of his young brother he caused him to be apprehended and accused them all of theft lord said they his father is old he will be extremely afflicted for his absence take one of us in his place and thou shalt in the end find us to be honest men god forbid said he that i should detain other than him who was found guilty of theft that would be injustice finding themselves out of hope to free their brother they saved themselves in a secret place remote from the city where the eldest said to his brethren you know the oath we took at our departure and how heretofore we entreated joseph i will not go out of egypt without my father's permission god is most just he shall dispose of me and my brother as shall please him return to your father and say unto him thy son was taken in theft we saw him and endeavored to our powers to deliver him they of the caravan shall be witnesses jacob said at their return they were the cause of that accident that did not displease you and he took patience saying god perhaps will favor my sons to return in health he knoweth in what condition i am he is most prudent in what he ordaineth he retired from among his sons extremely afflicted and bewailed the loss of his son joseph had his eyes continually covered with tears and he bore in his heart great sorrow his sons said unto him 
dost thou yet remember joseph to add to thy grief and hasten thine end i am said he extremely desolate i leave all to the will of god he hath taught me what ye know not my sons return into egypt and inquire tidings of your two brethren despair not of the spirit of god none despair of god's spirit but the wicked when they came unto joseph they said unto him the famine that is in our country hath extremely afflicted us it hath often constrained us to come to buy corn thou of thy favour hast made us good measure thou hast caused our money to be restored for alms god will reward thee he recompenseth such as are alms givers he said unto them ye remember what ye did unto your brother joseph they replied certainly thou art not joseph i am joseph said he and behold my brother benjamin god hath given us his grace he rewardeth him that hath his fear before his eyes and is patient in his afflictions he depriveth not the righteous of recompense god said they hath poured his favours upon us in saving thee whom we have exceedingly offended be not said he ashamed god this day pardoneth you that sin he is gracious and merciful return to your father and bear to him this shirt cast it upon his face he shall recover sight and return hither with him and with your whole family the caravan was then halfway upon return when jacob said to them that attended him i smell the odour of my son joseph you deride me but what i speak is most true they told him that he was still in his old error some days following one of his sons arrived with tidings of joseph and cast the shirt that he had given him upon him and incontinently he recovered his sight and said did i not tell you that i knew what ye knew not they said our father pardon us and ask the forgiveness of god for us we have exceedingly offended him he answered i will beg pardon of god for you he is gracious and merciful when they arrived before joseph he took his father by the hand saying enter without fear into egypt caused him to sit down and his brethren fell prostrate before him my father said he behold there the interpretation of mine old dream god hath rendered it true he hath favoured me in delivering me from prison and conducting you hither he hath put an end to the jealousy which the devil had procured between me and my brethren the lord is liberal to whom seemeth good to him he knoweth what is necessary for his people and is most prudent in what he ordaineth lord thou hast given me wealth and knowledge to interpret dreams creator of heaven and earth thou art my protector give me the grace to die in thy law and place me in the number of the righteous this history of joseph is an ancient history which i relate to thee thou wert not with his brethren when they conspired against him nevertheless the greatest part of the people are incredulous demand no reward of them for having preached the alcoran it instructeth only the wise 
how many signs be there in heaven and earth of the unity of god yet the people believe not therein and most of them adore idols assuredly god shall punish them at an unexpected hour and in a time which they know not say unto them behold the right way i call to the way of salvation and light such as follow me i return thanks to god for that i am not in the number of the unbelievers we sent aforetime none but men to instruct the people will not men consider what hath been the end of the wicked that were before them paradise is for them that are righteous will ye not be converted they caused the prophets to lose all hopes of their conversion and believed them to be liars but we protected them and delivered from their malice such as seemed good to us nothing shall exempt the wicked from the punishment of their pains they shall serve for example to men of spirit the al quran containeth no blasphemies it confirmeth the ancient scriptures and teacheth true believers the way of salvation end of chapter twelve the chapter of joseph from the al quran of muhammad translated out of arabic into french and newly englished by alexander ross read by abu jalal recorded in oxford england